Hello, it's Patrick here from thegaragebandguide.com. In this video, we're looking at GarageBand software instrument track. What is it? How do you use it? And how do you get the most from it? To get started, I'll open up a new blank project. When opening a blank project, GarageBand will prompt you to pick a track type to start working with. Now I'll just pick software instrument. GarageBand automatically brings up the musical typing window when you open a fresh software instrument track. The musical typing lets you play and record using the keys on your Mac's keyboard. Now, if you want to find out a bit more about how musical typing works, I'll leave a link to an in-depth tutorial in the description box under this video. So GarageBand has loaded up a classic electric piano patch from its sound library. Here's how it sounds. Now using the library pane over here, you're able to choose from hundreds of instrument and synth sounds. It is worth mentioning that you'll need to download all of GarageBand's additional content to get the full selection of sounds here though. So here's a wee taste of the kinds of sounds you'll be able to work with. Okay, to record a melody using your patch of choice, it's as simple as hitting the record button, but you might want to consider activating GarageBand's metronome feature first, as it will help keep your performance in time, which is essential if you plan to record other tracks in your project. I also have the counting feature activated, which gives, as you would expect, a one bar counting before recording begins. Great, I'll hit record and see what we can come up with. So let's listen back to it. So it sounds like two of the notes here haven't been recorded. They actually have, but what's happened is that I've started playing the notes a fraction too early, so they're not being played back in this region. Luckily, it's easily fixed using GarageBand's editor window. If I click on the editor icon, in the top left corner here, it's the button that looks like a, a little pair of scissors. The editor window will open. I'll just get rid of the musical typing window for now. I'm going to use the quantization function to not only fix my one particular timing issue, but actually improve the timing of my recording overall. If I click on the time quantize menu, you can see there are a ton of timing options here. It's actually quite an imposing number to choose from, in fact. Now these are all great if you are working with a very particular time signature, but since I've recorded a very simple chord, I just need to choose the top option. You see how the notes jumped in line with the beginning of the track? Let's see if that's done the trick. Now I'll add another software instrument track to my project by clicking on the new tracks button here and again selecting software instrument. Again, I'll choose a patch from the library pane. To bring the musical typing window back, either click window in the toolbar at the top of the screen and select show musical typing or use the keyboard shortcut command and K. 
My counting and metronome are still set up from the last time, so I just need to hit record. Again, I'll use GarageBand's quantize function to make sure all my notes come in where they should and are in time too. Here's something you might want to consider, especially if you're using a lot of software instruments in your project or are running a slightly older Mac. Locking your tracks. Locking a track actually saves it as an audio file within your project, which reduces the processing power needed to play the track back. To lock your track, first head to Track in the toolbar at the top. Hover your pointer over Track Header and select Show Track Lock. Now you'll see a wee lock icon appear in the track header of all the tracks in your project. From here, Click on the lock icon in the tracks you want to lock and hit play. Bear in mind that once you've locked your track, it can't be edited. So if you want to add effects or use the quantization function we just covered, you'll need to unlock it again. To do that, you just need to click on the padlock icon again. So there you have it. That's an overview of how to get started with software instrument tracks in GarageBand. If you like this video, then hit the like button. It really does help. Subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you come and check out the garagebandguide.com for more great GarageBand tutorials. Bye for now.